Growing up, my mother taught us the importance of sharing our blessings with the less fortunate. She would take my brother and me to the slum areas in my hometown in the Philippines where we can hand out food and clothing to those people who are in need. Over the years, that was the part of our family's tradition. And as I grew up, I realized how much time, money, and effort my mother has sacrificed. Have you ever thought of donating to a charity but do not have enough time or the funds to do it? Do you have enough money but are too hesitant to give it away? In the current pandemic, money is a sensitive subject and not having enough time to volunteer while attending school, are there others who might have free time? Well, there is an alternative. I am currently growing my hair so I can donate it to the charity of my choice. It is economical and is an efficient mean to help the other people. If you like helping other people, let me persuade you what I think donating hair is a good idea. Today, I will be discussing three key points in donating hair. First, the causes of hair loss. Second, some information about donating hair and its requirements. And lastly, the charities who accept hair donations. I will also mention a couple of opposing considerations such as authentic hair versus synthetic and how growing hair to the desired length takes too long. Hopefully at the end of this speech, I can persuade you to commit. To get started, let's look at the causes of hair loss. Thousands of people out there right now are undergoing extreme hair loss that result in loss of self-esteem and psychological distress, most notably for those people who are losing more hair. But what causes it? Some causes include hormonal changes, the tr nutrient deficiencies, and weather. But there are two leading causes of hair loss. Cancer treatments and alopecia areata. According to a peer-reviewed journal by Elizabeth Richardson, I quote, 80% of patients suffer total hair loss within 21 days, end quote, after receiving medication for cancer treatment. The following cancer treatments can harm the cells that help hair growth. Another cause is alopecia areata. According to Professor Kitam Al-Refu, who has a clinical PhD in dermatology, and connective disease specialist, I quote, alopecia is a common complaint in dermatology clinics and can be caused by a number of conditions, end quote. At the end of her study, she concluded, she observed hair problems that might also be caused by important nutritional deficiencies, such as iron and zinc, among other children. Additionally, according to the National Alopecia Areata Foundation, alopecia areata is a common autoimmune disease that causes extreme hair loss all over the body. In fact, the website also stated that it affects as many as 6.8 million people in the US with a lifetime risk of 2.1%. Some of you are still asking why, why donate? Donating will give you a sense of self-fulfillment knowing that you are giving back to society to help. Giving back to charity will also help strengthen personal values. Another reason for giving is it will also help you introduce to your children, your nieces, and your nephews the importance of generosity. Sharing this experience with our children will show them that they can make positive changes in this world at a very young age. So what are the requirements for hair donations? According to the website Business Insider, an author Rebecca Harrington said, most hair donation charities require with a minimum of 8 to 12 inches long Hair donations requirements differ in each charity. I'd also like to add that the charities that I will mention are all nonprofit organizations and are recommended by the American Cancer Society or ACS. Here are a few examples of charities that accept hair. First is the Children with Hair Loss. This organization was founded by Regina Villamure, a former cosmetology specialist with a master's certification with the American Hair, Hair Loss Council. According to their website, they provide hair for free to those children and young adults under 21 who are facing medical-related hair loss. Donations must be a minimum of 8 inches long. Second is the Pink Heart Funds, an organization founded by Joanne Nicely, who knows firsthand the emotional and psychological effects of going through cancer treatments and losing hair. Guidelines include hair should be at least 13 inches long, may accept colored and permed hair as long as it's not overprocessed and bleached. Gray hair is also accepted. And lastly is the Wigs for Kids. This organization was founded by cosmetic therapist Jeffrey Paul. This organization has been helping children from hair loss since 1981. 
According to their website, this organization is a cooperative of effort among certified cosmetic therapists throughout North America. According to Jeffrey Paul, I quote, children shouldn't have to worry about how they look, especially when they're in the middle of a health crisis. We want to give these kids the opportunity to feel good about themselves again, end quote. Hair donations include hair length of at least 12 inches or longer, no bleached or colored, but they also accept gray hair. I want to add that short hair donations are also accepted. If there are no recipients, the charities will sell them to cover the manufacturing costs of the wigs. Now, I know some of you are wondering how many people donate hair. I will show you two testimonials from those people who don donated. First is a testimony from the Pink Heart Funds website. This is Jalay. She is a 12, she's 12 years old and has Down syndrome. She decided to donate her hair, hair, hoping to help someone get their perfect wig. The last testimony is from a mother of a five-year-old named Zach. Zach was curious about hair loss after watching it on TV commercials, and he began asking questions, and then later on decided that he also wanted to donate his hair as well. Here are some pictures of other people who donated hair and their recipients. Just so you know, the number of hair donations have increased this past few months. According to the website Allure, there was a spike in the number of people who donated hair. A number of posts with hashtags hair donations have flooded both Instagram and Twitter, proudly showing off their before and after pictures. However, we also need to address the opposing views of donating hair. I would like to start with synthetic hair versus human hair. Synthetic hair is cheap. The wig's lifespan doesn't usually last a year like human hair wigs. It needs to be replaced more frequently, whereas with human hair wigs, the recipient can choose the kind of texture that resembles their own hair. Styling versatility, human hair wigs can be styled, permed, and colored. Its lifespan can last a year or more with proper care. The only disadvantage is the cost. Real hair wigs are expensive, but that's why charities like Lots of Love give free wigs to those children and other people who cannot afford it. This is also why these charities are also accepting monetary donations to cover the manufacturing costs. The next concern would be the amount of time it takes to grow hair and the maintenance while growing it. My hair took about a year and a half to two years to grow this long. It can be irritating because it gets in the way all the time, plus the hassle of hair maintenance. But I want you to keep in mind that there are worse things than growing and maintaining your hair. Just imagine losing all of your hair. So we talked about the causes of hair loss, the requirements for donating hair, and the charities that accept them. We also talked about two opposing views that most people consider when talking about hair donations. So for in my conclusion, donating hair is a commitment. When you make this commitment, you are not just giving away your hair for wigs to give it to those who need it. But keep in mind that you're also sharing a part of yourselves. Don't do it just for the selfie. As I end my speech, always remember, philanthropy is not about the money. It is about feeling the pain of others and caring enough about their needs to help. My name is Mir Manala and thank you for listening.